Okay. Um, I have taken a, a slightly different view because I knew that probably my first two colleagues were going to take the technical perspective. Uh, so I have taken, for lack of a better word, the political perspective, but it is not political with a small p, it's political with a big p, so don't be scared. Let me uh, confess, first of all, uh, unashamed intellectual piracy. I think that some of the best work that has been done in terms of rankings and thinking deeply about rankings have been done by Ellen Hazenkorn. Um, and, and I think that, that, that his work is uh, actually very, um, very interesting, very pertinent, and very unusual, because she combines real empirical research about rankings and different ranking systems with a very profound and, in my opinion, intelligent view about knowledge systems and what I would like to call uh, the political economy of knowledge in, 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 in the global world. So uh, I will skip the quick history that I was going to give because it has been sort of somehow known. Uh, and I'm going to concentrate on the other four points as fast as I can. Um, basically to say that this thing of the rankings has started fairly recently but has gone very deep and very fast. While there were rankings forever, because you could always compare and say this is the top institution, this systematization of rankings is a new thing. The globalization, the internationalization of the rankings is, is, is a new thing. <laughs> and, the, and the notion that there are rankings that become supranational because they are managed through supranational organizations is yet another new thing. Now, uh, the whole point of this is that why do the rankings emerge? Because we are talking about them without actually situating them contextually in why do these things happen? So, and, and it is a combination of the, the actual process of globalization, the expansion of knowledge, and the very notion of the knowledge economy that, that, that create the space for this type of benchmark, benchmark, benchmarking and comparabilities that come uh, in, in, in relation to, uh, to, to the rankings. The other important point is that knowledge is as much, whether we like it or not, in a global world, a commodity as others. So the labor market for academics and the labor market for professionals becomes something. That, that, that it is much more the focus of attention than it would have been otherwise. Now, what do they do besides measuring things? In terms of the administrator that is sitting where, 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 where Professor Villacasia and I sit, uh, they enhance, in theory at least, a student choice because they bring information for students to choose where they go. But they have a much more important function from a geopolitical point of view, and it is if you have read any document about science and technology of almost any country, certainly ours, the issue of what is the uh, relative position of a country in terms of international competitiveness, this is one of the things that the rankings do. The other thing that they do, of course, is to, um, in a sense, put some level of pressure at individual higher education institutions and in, in terms of education systems to shape their, their, their or to shift their strategy in a certain direction. Hmm? If you want to be a competitive university, you need to do A, B, C, D, etc. Of course, the other thing that they do is to change to some extent the discourse that establish a relationship between knowledge, economy, and society, and what are the responsibilities that universities have in relation to these, to these three elements. And finally, and because rankings are becoming regional, and, 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 uh, and of course they have an a certain, a importance within the nation states as they still exist, uh, also, they change the relationship between higher education institutions within the nation state and within regions. 
And needless to say, they change the way in which high education institutions are managed. The anxiety uh, that, that, that Professor Habib has <laughs> about where, where VETS is in, 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 relation to, to in, in relation to several rankings and several metrics is not something that is Professor Habib's problem. It's something that most uh, research universities, would be research universities, and not so research universities, somehow share. Uh, so that changes behavior. But also creates a new industry, creates an industry of business intelligence that gets applied to higher education. Hmm? All of us have one form or another of business intelligence, sometimes I w it might be offensive, call it intelligence, but anyway, uh, uh, that, that, that we use to diagnose and to decide on a strategy. And those of us who do not have sufficient of that are always worried about what is it the next thing that we can buy to make us more competitive. And then it does something that for me is very uh, unfortunate, and it is that the idea of being in the top tens becomes a strategy. And we have seen that here uh, 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 in, in, in our country, and certainly that has happened in other places too. So the whole being of the university is reduced to the university becoming one in the, in the, in the top 100. And that has very serious implications. Now, the other thing that it is not uh, independent from the rankings and the discourse of the rankings is the notion of world class. Um, I would say that rivers of ink have gone into uh, 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 writing about world class things. There are world class everything, but in particular, the notion of world class universities. Um, and, and that creates a, a new form of, of, of a smoke and mirrors in many places, where, where in, in regions and countries that have a different kind of problems being concerned about these type of issues. In one of her latest uh, publications, Helsercon uh, talks about a Syrian university fundamentally concerned about why couldn't they become, uh, whether, why couldn't they have a world-class university? seems to me that the answer is kind of obvious, but anyway. Um, and then is, is, is the other issue that one can think, if one forces a bit the, the, the thing and one sort of suspends for a moment uh, objections about what constitutes quality, that the rankings are measures of quality. But they're not just that. There are marketing devices, there are forms of attracting staff, there are a number of things, uh, and including also the selection uh, process of who is a partner for your university and who you establish alliances uh, or, or teams with. Now, this said, um, universities have become, because of the, or the process of globalization, the changes in the form of capitalist production, et cetera, uh, fundamental uh, 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 global actors in terms of production of knowledge and, and, and et cetera. So the, the notion of global cities and global universities is, is something that starts going together in a sort of, in, in different combinations of more and more sophisticated networks and hubs within the, the knowledge economy. Now, but globalization and this stage of capitalist development has also done something that Piketty has explained quite well uh, in, the, in the economic realm, which is, which is to, to create a very wide gap hmm, in terms of those who have and those who have not. So there is a huge accumulation of wealth and investment in certain institutions, and there is clear that the, the ranking system reinforces that differential between the regions in the world that produce knowledge and the regions in the world that not produce that knowledge. Even if, even if uh, we have 21, I think, Chinese universities that are in the, in the rankings now, still 
the main producers of knowledge, if you look at the, at the sort of knowledge map of the world, keeps on being elsewhere. And this is re aggravated, so to speak, by the rankings themselves. OK, so that creates differentiation and hierarchy. Now, there are problems with this, and, and, and we can discuss that better. But I mean, there is, there is, what is it that the rankings measure? in terms of research and what type of the research they measure. And I think that that's also a bit traditional for the manner in which knowledge itself and knowledge production have been evolving. Finally, uh, in, this, in this area, basically what the, what the rankings are is a kind of reporting card of the disparities of investment and resources across the world in terms of systems. So we can read them in different ways. So, and of course, they somehow legitimate that type of inequality. Now, in a previous life, uh, I would have said, and some people also would have agreed, that all of this happens because uh, neoliberal approaches. But I mean, this is infinitely bigger than neoliberalism. This has, you know, my, in, in certain countries, there must have been neoliberal policies that could have supported this. But I mean, basically, it's the change in the way in which the world produces and what is it that is being produced uh, that, that has changed. So um, without getting into much detail, uh, the point is that this is not going to change anytime soon. So although I always think that sometimes it is better to be off the grid, we have to manage within the grid. Now. The other thing that, 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 that we are saying is that uh, rankings are also uh, uh, a proxy for, for quality. So there are forms of assessing the quality of the graduates. They, they show comparability and transferability of, of, of graduates in terms of employment. Is the issue of value for money? Do we invest in terms of that, that, that are good, either as private or as state? And in a sense, it's also production or a sort of consumer protection hmm, at the time of massification. Now, the problem here is that whether we call them rankings or we call them something else, there has to be some level of accountability in terms of the private and public investment in higher education. How do we manage to establish that? And, and, and higher education institutions uh, tend to think that everything that smells of accountability uh, is a neoliberal conspiracy or an act of managerialism. And so those of us who sit on the other side of the, of the boundary um, are always trying to persuade our academic colleagues that actually we are not that bad, that, the, that, that we own, hmm? that we owe to the society in which we operate, that we owe to the government that funds us uh, a, a, an answer in terms of what it is that we are doing with the responsibility that have been allocated to us. So um, let me go uh, back, uh, back now forward, because I don't want to talk too much. Now, I want to talk about us uh, as, 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 as high education uh, execs managers. Um, I think that particularly here in South Africa and elsewhere, but there are a number of unwanted consequences of the fascination with rankings. One, and I hope that, that, that Nico would agree with me, is that the golden standard gets put in only one possibility of being. So therefore, everybody, when they grow up, want to be uh, a UCT. That's what I was saying when I used not to be at UCT. Um, <laughs> it's complicated now. But, uh, but that's, the, that's, that's one of the So everybody has that aspiration. And in a system that it is highly undifferentiated from a policy point of view, although deeply differentiated de facto, this is problematic. The other point that it is problematic is that the, the, the management discourse tends to become unbalanced either in the expression or in the reading of it 
But the result of this is that every single academic that you will meet at the University of Cape Town, at Vets, I'm sure, at the University of the Free State, for sure, will say that the only thing that matters for management is the research that you produce, and that therefore teaching and learning should not have so much attention and so much this and that, because in any case it's not rewarded. This creates everywhere a number of problems, but in a country like ours, they multiply those problems. Uh, so, and I think that this is this is one of the of the of the areas of concern that we that we need to have. So, to to to, to round off all, all of this, uh, the rankings are a symptom of a fundamental change in knowledge production, uh, and it had very, very important questions for the manner in which universities are managed, and fundamentally for the type of accountability that universities can or should uh, uh, exercise in relation to society broadly and in relation to the state. One of the interesting things that, that, that Helsercorn uh, says, which is not time to elaborate now, is that the rankings and globalization changes forever the Clark triangle into something else. So anyway, thank you very much.